I think, I mean, you think Louisiana, obviously, you think resilience, and I think that is good and bad because it's almost, you know, we've been through so much, like, the word itself has a tendency to kind of become a mockery. Hi, my name is Veronica Briette, I'm 17 years old, and I live in Muntz, Louisiana. Hi, my name is Kenyon Keller, I am 14 years old, and I live in Laplace, Louisiana. When Hurricane Ida first took place, we were in my parents' room, which is a little that way, and so we were all kind of waiting it out. And then gradually, as things got worse, we moved into the closet because of the lack of windows. I think a big factor that led our family to not evacuate was, I guess, just in the past, storms have passed here. And, you know, they weren't this bad or this detrimental at all. And also, I think my parents asked around a lot in this neighborhood and asked whether they were staying or going. And a lot of people did stay. So I think a lot of people's opinions influenced whether to stay or not. We wound up a lot of us staying. And now we know how that turned out. So. When Ida first took place, I was in Texas. We chose to evacuate because, like, my family, my family was here for Katrina and they a lot of bad things happened to their house and their house got destroyed when they was living in Louisiana, when they was living in New Orleans. They just didn't want to go through that same thing again. There were so many and you know, when you cover these things you'll see the trees that snap. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to see these giant two hundred year old oak trees in some places it's, it's that, that are really. pulled from the ground from their roots, yeah. partly because of the saturation of the ground. On the day after Katrina in Wayland, Mississippi, there were two kinds of things. That were we realized it was only going to get worse when we were all in the closet. We knew it was only going to get worse when the amount of days we stayed there changed. We only expected to stay there probably like four or five days and ended up being two, three weeks. We made a phone call to get through to one of our neighbors and he kept saying, oh, if it's past y'all, it's past y'all because it's by me now because he was in a different parish farther from us. But, you know, some time went by, 30 minutes goes by and it, nothing's slowing down. We still hear everything. Um, yeah, nothing's getting any better. And we realized that this was going to be bad and we didn't know when it was going to stop. I would need to take a chance to walk them all because I didn't want to I'm too scared to get nothing. It's time to ever see it to go. Right, they go to the neighborhood. Yeah, they went going just that way. And I just told them, uh, told them to, I said, if these people, they talk to this thing, it's a hurricane. Okay, boy, do it. Maybe I'll put myself in. Can you imagine what a fire is? Coming home to my house was really sad. Like my whole my whole neighborhood was messed up because the whole Laplace was messed up. Like it was hard to see like what the house looked like and, and being inside the house with the house being messed up, with the with the ceiling leaking, with the walls gone, with the walls having mildew and everything else in the house having mildew. It just was scary, crazy. Didn't even seem like a home. Everything was messed up. It was disastrous. It's been a very heavy burden that I think a lot of us, by us I mean the people of Louisiana, I think the young people of Louisiana too, mostly. It's been very hard because, um, I mean, I'm 17, I'm a senior in high school. Um, usually senior year, you know, you're preparing for stuff, you're doing college applications, you're looking up stuff, you're, you know, getting ready for this next chapter of your life. And that's very hard to do with the emotional and physical burden of a pandemic and then now the destruction and chaos of a hurricane. I will say the shocking part of all this for me and my family was not seeing a lot of my family because because my my father and my sister stayed 
and we had love that they stayed and to keep the house to keep the house together but it just ended up not working how they expected it to be so it been a long time since we could see them or talk to them since the power went out there would just be these sporadic moments of someone just kind of letting out a wail or a cry i mean I've, n I've never experienced a moment like that where I have my sister in the corner on her knees praying, please God, don't let us die. Please. That was almost too much for me. I know numerous people whose houses can either be qualified as a total either knocked down because of how bad the damage was or um, yeah very very detrimental i've never seen anything like this especially in our neighborhood um there's roofs missing there's obviously shingles missing structural damage it's just insane i feel like there's nothing we really could do about it except pray This is life. We just need to figure out a way.